24 minutes past the hour. Listen to this. There is an entire village that is set up for people who are living with dementia. Now, our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, is here. He visited this facility and, and saw firsthand how fascinating, I hope helpful, it was to people suffering from dementia. Normally, you'd have to be with family members who could watch you a lot um, and not really be able to or, live on your own a whole lot. Right, or, or you're in a facility, which yeah. is, you've seen these, these anonymous wards, nonstop television, people strapped into the chairs. I mean, it's not a, a very pleasant sort of way to think about people Living. with severe dementia. Yeah. yeah, so these are people with severe dementia. So that, as you point out, they would otherwise need 24 hour a, a day care, seven days a week. And instead, they created this entire village for them to let them, they have supermarkets, so you can- I you have can, to see how this works. Yeah, you can, well, they go to the supermarket. Uh, uh, people who are working in the supermarket are also trained to take care of people with severe dementia. Same thing at the restaurants, the hair salons. And the whole idea is that they try and create these villages that have a sense of familiarity for people. So, for example, Robin, if you were a carpenter or a laborer uh, before you developed dementia, the, the, the residence in which you would live would reflect a lot of your same sensibilities. So it's this whole idea of pro providing familiarity for people mm -hmm. can actually help them become a lot a lot calmer in a situation like this. And, and connected. It can spur the, the parts of your brain that remember those things and identify with it. Same goes with music. And we know the power of music and that that is used with therapy. They use it here as well? Yeah, they, they do. And it's, it's really fascinating from a neuroscience perspective. Music is one of the few things that actually incorporates both sides of the brain. The right, you know music really well. The right side is more of your melody and your tune left side is going to be your lyrics and everything and you're constantly toggling back and forth when you're actually singing a song you do that all the time i talked to yvonne who's one of the founders of this uh -huh. particular village asked her about that as well music is very important because people with dementia we see that people with dementia and it's scientifically shown also that uh, music is is part that in the brain that is that functions the longest we i've even seen people that can't talk anymore, they don't have the words to talk, but they can sing songs. Isn't that something, especially songs that you might remember from when you were a kindergartner? Even if you were not talking at all, you still remember those songs. You yeah. saw how happy they were with the hand-holding and keeping the beat. So this cannot be cheap. I mean, um, setting up an entire <laughs> society, an entire town built for people with dementia. Well, let me tell you, you know, if you look at a lot of facilities that exist now, it's typically three staff members to each patient sort of ratio. They're pretty expensive the way they are, and that's the same ratio they're keeping at this village. I asked Yvonne about this, and she said it was roughly the same cost of other sort of higher-end facilities in the Netherlands. Who, who built this? I mean, was this a, a government thing? Was this a company thing? No, Somebody the, took this on for research? Yeah, the, she was actually working at another nursing home, and what, what happened was her father passed away, and, and she had this flash where she said, you know, I can't imagine that my father could have ever lived in a facility that I helped manage. Mm -hmm. So her and another founder privately decided to build this. But, you know, they have a government uh, health care system, so the government health care pays for a lot of the residents to be there. I, I have this vision, though, or, you know, this, uh, this picture of maybe someone with dementia wandering around, getting lost, getting outside the community. How does that not happen? Is that it like the whole... A Truman Show set up where things are walled or what? Yeah, it, it, it kind of is. You know, we, I've been reluctant to use the Truman Show analogy, but I think it's, it's, it's a, it, that, that's probably the best thing to describe like that. Like a world set up within a world is what I meant by there's, that. Yeah. yeah, there's one door that you can get in and out of. That's it. Really? That's one door of this whole village. Everything else is part of the village. And that one door is monitored continuously. You're kidding me. No, we had, when we, as a film, we were one of the film crew, few film crews allowed in there, we had to come in and out that same door. They had to escort us in the door. And you see residents sometimes walking up to the door, but the door not opening, you know, and, they, and they're sort of simply redirected. That door's not working today. This is your home back here. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. 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 So a world within a world, but um, secure. Yeah, it seemed very humane to me, I have yeah. to tell you. Yeah. All right. I wonder if it's coming this way. Yes. Dr. Chandi Gupta, thank you. Thank you if you want to look more inside this fight against dementia and this rare way to do that, tune in to Sanjay's um, Sanjay Gupta, MD. That'll be on Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on our sister network, CNN. Good to see you. Thank you, Ram. Thanks for having me.